right, guys, got the uh, turbo ready to come off here. So um, we just got to disconnect a few more things. And one of the first things we had to do is get the coolant lines off. So up at the top here, you got a 10 millimeter bolt holds the coolant line bracket on and the coolant line runs along the valve cover here. So <clears throat> what I usually do just to prevent any more coolant from leaking out down there uh, when you make the disconnect, uh, I just kind of pop the coolant reservoir off. It's usually sitting right here. And I just pop it off and because the headlights off and you, know, you can just pop it down there and then this is the connection to the coolant line in the back of the turbo there so because the coolant's down here there's not going to be any gravity trying to push the uh, coolant down to the where it's disconnected so i'm going to pull that 10 off i'm going to pull the two bolts that go into the side of the turbo now because this turbo uses all new coolant lines um, we're going to be removing this hard line completely from both sides, from here and over there. Um, if you're using a hybrid turbo like a Woosh or a Puma um, or AET, anything like that, you're just going to disconnect the lines, um, uh, take the bolts out of the brackets of the coolant lines, and just kind of push them out. You don't have to remove them completely. And then for this step, I do it from the top. Some people do it from the bottom. I do it from the top. That way I can put this coolant drain pan underneath the car. You know, it's got a big, you know, flange on it and the actual drain pan itself. I shove it underneath the car. When I disconnect it, it all just runs down into this pan over here. And then I can just slide the pan out when I'm done, you know, and then dump this into either a coolant uh, jug or I have these uh, specific oil and coolant jugs here. <clears throat> these white ones here. So one for coolant, one for oil. And then I just take those to recycle. So I'm going to go ahead and disconnect these uh, coolant lines. Let the coolant drain down and then uh, should be able to remove the heat shield at that point and then we can access the bolts to hold the turbo on. All right, pulled the lines off. So at the turbo, they're 17 mil and then both brackets are held on by small tens. So this is the passenger side bracket. If you're looking at it from the back of the engine, goes in the turbo down here, goes in the side of the head up here. And this one is a pain to get to. Um, what I do is obviously the intake and everything will be off and I use a long 10 and a really shorty extension to get in there, this setup right here, to get in there, break that bolt loose and pull it out. Um, once you break the 17s loose at the bottom here, the thing's going to start dripping coolant. So that's where that pan comes in. You can see it down there, right there. Uh, all the coolant will drain down in there. It's really not a ton, probably less than a quart, it'll stop dripping, and then you can disconnect the lines from the hose on each side. So this is the one that'll go to the reservoir, it goes here, and then the other one, you'll know where it's at. So <clears throat> it's over there, disconnect that, pull the lines off. Now the next step's gonna be unbolting the turbo from the manifold if you're keeping the manifold on. If you're removing the manifold, you remove all the manifold bolts or nuts. Um, as you can see, I got the heat shield off without mangling it. Once you remove these lines, this thing just pulls right off. It'll just slide right off the top of the manifold. So we'll be able to reuse that um, as long as there's a provision on the turbo, which there should be. There is. Yes, provision for heat shield bolt right there. So you'll be able to reuse the factory heat shield with this turbo. But I'm going to hop underneath the car here and loosen the bolts on the bottom side of the manifold going, uh, going up. And then you have one up on top. So I'm going to do the bottoms first. And then I'm going to take the top one off and drop the turbo down. All right. Getting underneath the car here. So you have a turbo feed right at the top here. <clears throat> see if I can get a good angle at it. It's this guy right here. So it's just a 15, uh, break it loose with a wrench. You can be able to slide a wrench in between the wastegate, wastegate arm and the actual turbo. And then you just bust it free with a 15. And then you have a manifold nut here. And then you have two on the underside. Might be really hard to see up there. Yeah, it's gonna be tough. So just on the back side of the turbo up through here, you'll be able to use a long extension and break those two free. So I do the back ones first, then you can access this one on top. And before we do that, we need to take off the drain line here. So these are just Torx, I believe they're 30s. You'll take those two off and then you have one right here and it'll pop right off. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. 
and pull the turbo off the car. Turbo is out. So one thing I forgot to mention in the last one, uh, last clip was remove the factory diverter valve if it's still on there. If you have an aftermarket blowout valve, it might clear. But um, when you leave that on here, you can actually catch the uh, intermediate shaft here. So if you don't disconnect it and you pull the turbo down, you're going to hit this and it won't slide out the rest of the way. So remove it. Um, here's the factory oil feed line. Uh, this crush washer needs to be replaced. You're going to reuse the bolt, but not the washers. Um, this one here can be a pain in the ass. So just go ahead and snip it and pull it off if you can't get it. Not a big deal because the kit comes with a new one. Um, the manifold, if you're going to change it, obviously now is the time. And in the kit, the S280 kit, you're gonna get a new fire ring here, this gasket. So you'll get a new one, don't reuse it. Um, you're not gonna reuse anything off the turbo. Anything you see here is pretty much it. You're just gonna leave this be, chuck in the trash, um, or maybe sell it online. Maybe somebody wanna buy it to use it as a hybrid core. But this is the oil feed, or sorry, the oil drain line here. So this is kind of a pain in the ass to remove. What I do is I disconnect this, um, or remove the bolt here, leave it in the block, and then I disconnect it from the turbo on this side, from down here. Then I slide it out and then pull it up and over the intermediate shaft that's kind of in the way. So I'm gonna clean up some of these parts we're gonna reuse, which is the oil drain uh, here. This needs to be cleaned up and reused. The O-ring on it won't focus. Let's see here. So the O-ring that's on this, just clean it up and then use a... Why won't you focus, you dick? Anyways, clean that off. Put a little lube on it when you um, put it back in the block and you should be good. Um, you are not going to reuse these factory nuts. Um, if you're going to be installing a blow-off valve, which you should, obviously you can reuse these bolts here not a big deal um, i'm going to be reusing the factory diverter valve for now i'm going to add a go fast bits vta from our website on here just going to go in between so i'm going to run that for now just to kind of see what we can get away with with all the factory hardware so i'm going to clean up and start prepping the new turbo to go on now for the part people are a little bit afraid of with this turbo is modifying the block a little bit. So you're just actually making a small clearance on this provision here. Um, you're only gonna knock off the top side, uh, I would say between 12 and nine o'clock here. You're gonna be knocking this down about an eighth of an inch. So I'm gonna be using a uh, air tool here. So I'm just gonna change this out to a sanding disc. This is kind of like a Scotch-Brite disc here. So throw it on the ground. That way it gets the best use. Anyways, um, if you don't have air, electric, you can use a die grinder here. Uh, this is just a flap disc. Uh, you can get these at Harbor Freight for about 19 bucks. And then you can get the disc at Harbor Freight as well for about $3.99. So um, it's good to have one of these around anyways. But if you don't have one, go get one. If you do have one, then you're good to go. Um, the other thing I'm gonna modify and, and make another clip here in a second but um, the studs are still in the manifold the kit comes with new ones here so if yours are kind of chewed up I recommend replacing them anyways um, even if they look decent I mean you got brand new ones might well use them but to get these out um, use a E7 socket um, it looks like this here so it's a star basically an inverse Torx um, it's size 7 but you'll just um, put that on there and turn it slowly until it breaks free. Then you just pull it right out of the manifold. And then the new ones, uh, you just thread in by hand. So on the new turbo, you can see here a new stud. It's just put in there finger tight. When you put the nut on it, it's going to pull it. And then that's where you get all your torque from. So remove these from the manifold, use the new ones. Um, if you start to turn on it and it feels like it's not going to break free, Grab some WD-40, Croil is what I use. This is the best stuff here. It's expensive. Mentioned it before, but I got the new convenient king size. So it was like 29 bucks, I think, but little squirt, squirt, good to go. Let it sit for like five, 10 minutes and then pop it off. So I'm gonna grab the sanding tool that I threw on the ground, change out the pad and start grinding shit. Let's take a look. 
All right, you can see now, the little top side of that's been grounded down. It's better without the light. So not big of a deal at all. Probably took me two or three minutes. Um, that's because I use air. It's a little bit more precise. It takes uh, metal off a little bit slower. But if you use the uh, die grinder, probably take you about two seconds. So be careful if you've got that die grinder in there. So um, it hits, you know, right about here area. Um, it's not really a big deal. Once you, once you get it right, um, you'll know because the flange will sit really flat and it'll hit up here. You'll hear it, you know, clunk, sit flush. And then you'll look in here and you'll see a gap between the block and the actual turbo there. So um, this is ready to go. Uh, oh. Don't be stupid. Obviously, this isn't that big of a deal because um, it's exhaust, but you don't want the shit flying inside your uh, new turbo. So plug that, and then you have your oil feed on the block, or sorry, in the head. Pop that out, and then your oil drain. So cover those up before you start grinding away. And as crazy Russian hacker says, use eye protection. Safety is number one priority. So. This is ready to go on. I'm gonna throw the studs in the manifold. Uh, I'm gonna pop this up in there real quick, hook up the uh, nut on top, and then I'm gonna run the oil feed line into it, get the oil drain on it, and then start hooking the coolant lines. Turbo is mounted. Got everything all snugged up. So turbo is tightened down to the manifold, oil line or oil drain lines back in. Um, I put it in here and kind of threaded this about halfway. And then I started lining this up. So I'm not gonna lie, this is kind of a pain in the ass. Um, what I did is I put the gasket in between the turbo and the uh, drain flange, put the gasket in there, and then I push it in. Then I use the pry bar underneath here, tucked underneath, pushing on the drain towards the engine, just to line everything up because this has some tension in it because it's uh, sprung. So use the pry bar or a long flathead just to push it in line up this first hole here because this is a direct um, you didn't get extension straight on it or a socket straight on it so get that lined up put this in first and then line up the back one and snug it down then snug this one down here <clears throat> so i got the charge pipe on that's included in the kit so grommets are installed those fancy little nuts are installed as well and then we have this coupler here so this coupler has a here we go better angle here uh, this coupler has a little port off of it that goes to your blow off valve so this is the adapter that's included i got this dangling just so it's a little bit easier to see so this uh you bolt on your either your factory diverter valve your turbo smart your go fast bits whatever um, bolt it on and then you'll snap the bottom pressure side into the charge pipe coupler here and then the intake couplers on as well. And you can see the port for it right here. And that's gonna be the other side of the flange. Leave this loose, don't torque this down yet um, until you get your intake all lined up and then tighten the clamp here and then tighten the clamp here. Um, you can put the clamp on the outlet pipe because this is all bolted in place. Um, so you have a nice reference where everything needs to line up. So go ahead and put that on. You can see the boost control solenoids all hooked back up. So you have the boost source, which connects to the outlet of the turbo. It's kind of hard to see because everything's in here, but there is a little barb fitting here, come off the turbo. That goes to the bottom of the solenoid, just like stock. Then you have the vent hose, which is on top of the solenoid that goes to the blow valve adapter. There's a little nipple on the side here, goes there. And then the last one comes out of the side of the port, goes to your wastegate. Make sure you got clamps on everything. You can either reuse a factory or you can put a zip tie. Shit, everything's just dangling. Anyways, got the coolant lines preloaded here. So I installed it on the turbo first, got the clamps on, because next what's going to happen is I'm going to put the heat shield on from up top, torque it down. Um, actually, I'll probably just set it on, uh, wait to torque it down until I get the downpipe on which I don't have, so that's not gonna be in this install video. I'm waiting for it to be made. So um, that'll just get bolted on just like any other downpipe would. So once you got the heat shield on, you'll hook up the end of the adapters here. So both of these go to the coolant lines that you originally took off the factory turbo. So the 
passenger side one, that's where your new lines will connect to. And then your driver's side one, that's where your new line will connect to. Um, I still have to throw the oil feed line on, but I'm gonna do that from the top. It's a little bit easier to access from up there. So I took it off just so I can clean it off, get some lube on the O-rings here. And then I took the banjo bolt out of it, got the factory crush washers off and got the new ones that's included in the kit here. <clears throat> So I mentioned in the unboxing video, these might break, not a big deal, but you essentially just slide this on over the banjo and then the bolt will go through them like that. And then back into the top of the turbo. So <clears throat> from here, this is where the factory outlet actually is. So you can reuse um, whatever you had here before you took it apart. So if you had a factory, boost hose, so be it. Go ahead and put it back on. If you have a boost one, put it on. Um, there's really not any other couplers or replacements off there that use the factory piece, um, but it is required for this turbo kit because the outlet is in a different spot. So this is needed. Um, if you wanna be fancy, get it powder coated before you install it. Um, give lead time for that. But that pretty much does it for this turbo. I mean, from here, it's just throwing everything back together. You know, the intake tube back on, um, the downpipe back on, O2 sensors in the downpipe, um, and then connecting your um, oil feed line, which I don't have on yet. So once you get all that all squared away and buttoned up, you'll wanna flash a base tune on it from your tuner, preferably me. Go ahead and flash the tune on there and get your data logs and start tuning. So I'm overall, I'm pretty, Happy with the kit. I mean, it does suck that you got to grind the block a little bit, but it's not really that big of a deal. Um, and once you got that cleared away, I mean, it it fits pretty well. Um, everything's straightforward. I like the adapters. Nothing comes with comes with every clamp you need and everything. God, look at the mess. I made a huge mess. Anyways, so as you can see, there's just the adapter left for the intake. No spare parts is always a good thing. Nobody ever wants it. And then last but last not least, make sure you drop your tools in the coolant. Goodbye.